And one of the latest pieces of research, there's an excellent book if you're interested in stress, called The Upside of Stress by Kelly McGonigal. And in that book, it teaches us that it isn't stress that kills us. It isn't stress that makes us sick. You know what it is? It's another B word. It's what we, where am I going to write it? Uh, it's what we, B, mm, mm, I, E, V, E, what is it? Believe. It's what we believe about stress. If you believe stress is negative, it will be negative. If you believe stress is a challenge, and that's what these people do, then it will be a challenge. And in fact, some of the latest research, it's not so new now, it's maybe five, six, seven years old. Um, you know how they always said uh, the, the response to stress is fight or flight? And, and they assumed everybody was the same. Well, that's because most of the research is done on men and rats. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> Seriously, up till recently, almost all the research was done on men and rats. Well, surprise, we're not rats. And, and so they assume we're all the same. Well, lo and behold, UCLA did another study, and they found out women were completely different from men when it came to stress. Men do fight or flight. Women do tend and befriend. Women know that. When a man gets stressed, what does he want to do? He wants to either punch, or punch someone, or he goes into his cave, as John Gray says. And he wants to sit alone in his cave by himself to solve the problem. When a woman gets stressed, what does she want to do? Talk. <laughs> she wants to talk. She wants to find a few friends, several hundred, and talk endlessly about the problem. And we will talk and talk. You see around the room, the women are nodding and smiling, and the guys are going, I know, <laughs> drives me nuts. Yeah, fellas, because we need to talk about the problem. We talk and talk and talk and talk. And at the end of all the talking, we keep repeating things and we get to the end of the conversation. Nothing has changed, but we feel better. <laughs> because we feel, no, don't clap, seriously. And, and, and we feel validated because how we feel is validated by someone else who understands. That's what women do, we tend to befriend. That's why you need joy buddies. Not to just work on your life, but to share the stress. And together you can sit there going <sighs> 10 times until you fall about the floor laughing, and then things don't matter as much. Isn't that true? And so, uh, the third component they found in terms as an alternative way to deal with stress, and that's uh, to uh, excite and delight. So it's called rise to the challenge. It's perceiving it as a challenge, and that's where the growth mindset comes from. And so that sense of belonging and your beliefs about things are absolutely critical. And feeling separated from others makes a huge difference. And that's why a conference like this, a convention like this, is so important because you get amongst other people who know what your daily life is like. Like, can you really, when you go home at night, can you explain to someone what it was really like to be, like, there? Suddenly there's 11,000 warning signs and you are all on saving a life. And you do that five, six times a day. And you walk in the door and you're like... <laughs> and, and they say, what's the matter? It's like, oh, nothing. <laughs> That's why you want to take a little 10-minute spot somewhere, perhaps not at a pub or, a, you know, like a bar, but, but somewhere else where you can regroup and be compassionate with yourselves. Because until you're compassionate with yourself, it's very difficult to be truly compassionate with others. But you guys, you're like fabulous with compassion with everybody else. When it comes to you, nah, you just slap, get on with it. Stop it. Oh, joy buddies, there's another thing you can do. On the count of three, you're going to look at your one side and then the other, and with real love, you're going to look at your joy buddy and go, stop it. Stop it. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. Stop it. Stop it. <coughs> stop with the no compassion for yourselves and start with loving yourselves and giving yourselves a break for goodness sake. Now, let's quickly go on to, if the number one thing in life, the most important thing in life, is how you feel about yourself, what do you think the number one thing is that people want? I'll help you. It's acknowledgement and rec 
Cognition, yes, excellent. It's acknowledgement and recognition. Like you can never give anybody too much acknowledgement and recognition. And in your case, you guys need to start with yourselves and give yourselves a little acknowledgement and recognition. And to help you, I'm gonna give you two very quick ways to do it. One's from Aussies. You know the Wiggles? Yeah, the Wiggles, the kids group. You know how the Wiggles go like this? Well, I'm gonna give you a choice. Do you want to say yes or excellent? Now, how many quick for yes? How many for excellent? Awesome. Okay, so Joy Buddies, on the count of three, you're going to look one side, then the other, and you are going to acknowledge the person on either side of you. This person who's committed to be your Joy Buddy, to collaborate with you, to connect with you, and to embrace action with you, you are going to say, yes, and then excellent, and don't go like this, go, yes. <laughs> if you do that, you're like screaming at the world that you are so stuck in the suck end that there's no option. So ready, with as much enthusiasm as you can generate. Ready, one, two, three, go. Yes, <coughs> and excellent, awesome, awesome. And the second one actually comes from Wisconsin. Who's from Wisconsin? Yay, oh look down the front, hello, hello. You might know this man, his name is Roger. And Roger came up to me after a conference, and, and he told me about visiting his sister with a four-year-old year little nephew. And the little boy said to him, Uncle Roger, will you come and watch us at our gymnastics competition? And he says to the little boy, what are you going to do? And the little boy says, ta-da's. And, and that's what gymnastics is to four-year-olds. It's ta-da. And when a little child does ta-da's, what do grown-ups do? Yay! We clap, we cheer, so from a very early age, we learn to does bring recognition and acknowledgement. And, and you know, sometimes, haven't you gotten home, and you, you personally, and I know you guys do this, you saved a life. You didn't get the credit for it, but you saved it. You noticed something, you did something, and it literally saved someone's life. And you know, it's not like, you can't really come home and brag or say anything, but you walk in the door at night and someone says, how was your day? And you go, well, well, well it's pretty good. Saved someone's life. <laughs> now, on the inside, what are you doing? Ta-da! <laughs> but your family is so used to this, you know, or they're busy doing something else, they go, oh, yeah, that's nice. What happens to your ta-da? Ta -da. Why do I bother? Why do I bother? See. We, the most demotivating thing you can do is to not see someone silent tadas. You've got to look for their tadas. So on the count of three, joy buddies, you are going to look at your joy buddy. Now, I have to explain this kind of um, carefully because otherwise I make it confusing. You're going to look at your joy buddy and you're going to say, I think that deserves a tada. And your joy buddy will go, tada. And you will look at them and go, excellent. <laughs> and then your joy buddy will say, I think you deserve a tada. You will go, Ta-da! And they will go, yes! Isn't this fun? Make it fun if you... It could be fun if you chose to think of it as fun. So here we go, Joe Buddies. One, two, three. Go. I think you deserve it. Ta-da!